Good morning to you all. I am Enrico Franceschini. I've been a foreign correspondent with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica for all my life and for many years uh, from London. And uh, I've covered extensively Brexit and this seminar is about uh, British investments in Italy at the time of Brexit. And the time is, is perfect for organizing it. We have a summit in Brussels, uh, which is going to uh, decide uh, the next steps. Uh, today, there might be uh, an answer from uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Uh, all bets uh, are possible. Some people say we're going to have a no deal. Uh, the conventional wisdom uh, is that there will be deal uh, in the end, some sort of agreement, but it's uh, like a, a movie at the end, uh, a thriller that uh, after many years has arrived to the moment of truth. And so uh, it's perfect because there are uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, British citizens in Italy, a lot of uh, interests uh, in, uh, in uh, both countries that depends from this outcome. And uh, we will have an um, uh, interesting conversation uh, with experts uh, on this field ready at the end to answer the questions of the people who are connected uh, uh, with this uh, webinar. So um, I will start asking Alessandro Belluzzo, the president of the Italian Chamber of Commerce uh, in the United Kingdom, to give a, a brief uh, welcome. Good morning, good morning everyone. Um, I'm most pleased to welcome you all to such events. Uh, I think it's very important that today we're going to approach this topic of investing in the Italian real estate, considering what we just heard from Enrico as well. And I'm sure that we're going to hear very much uh, so uh, how much is very important to be ready for making an investment in this crucial time. So I'm extremely satisfied that the embassy in Rome, through Geraldine Williams and Hannah, Asha Brooks uh, are supporting this initiative, uh, of course the Tullio Law Firm and uh, the British uh, Chamber of Commerce for Italy with uh, Daniel Schillito. I think today also uh, to have a place in the sun represented today by Elizabeth Robinson is an important uh, showing the collaboration and why this is a topic that has been always in the mind of people and of course of investors, but it's very crucial at the time being because things are going to be different. Uh, regardless of whether we're going to have a deal or no deal, uh, which we hope, of course, to have one, even as one, uh, uh, the things are going to be different. And uh, most of the time I'm saying to people, it's no longer the UK. It's going to be like dealing with the USA. Uh, so uh, it's no longer uh, being part of Europe. So you need to be ready in your country, in the UK, to make an investment in another country, such as Italy, where we can help you, of course, with such professionals that we have today, with all the embassy and the institutions at your side. But it's important that you know what you are after, because things are going to be different from the UK as well, investing into Italy and vice versa. So as a chamber, we remain always open to these initiatives, especially also through this COVID scenario that doesn't know, uh, uh, help uh, at all the situation on the contrary, but maybe it will give more hope for people to invest in real estate in Italy and going to change uh, uh, lifestyle uh, uh, with this uh, situation COVID together with Brexit. So I think it's very important this initiative and I, I hope that we're gonna have a participant asking uh, many questions to try to enjoy this webinar and to give some important answer back to uh, people. Thank you very much for your time. I'll remain as well for questions later on. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. And now uh, a word of welcome from uh, the other organizer of this event, uh, Mr. Daniel Schillito, uh, Vice President of the British Chamber of Commerce uh, in Italy. Please. Grazie Enrico and welcome everybody to this event today. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the British Chamber of Commerce for Italy here with headquarters in Milan. We're delighted as usual to be working once again with the Italian Chamber of Commerce for Italy based in the UK and our good friend Alessandro. Um, we're also very grateful Enrico for your time and the time uh, and the, the uh, assistance of La Repubblica. 
Um, I'd also um, like to welcome our good colleagues from the British Embassy here in Italy, who we work together with on numerous occasions, especially over the last four years as we navigate this Brexit uh, meandering uh, course. Uh, and I can't wait to hear from our speakers, in particular uh, Liz Rollinson from A Place in the Sun and Gian Domenico de Tullio. We're grateful for your, your time and your ability to be here with us. Um, I think that uh, uh, from as far as Brexit goes, uh, we've, been, we've been following Brexit, of course, and we've created a Brexit uh, committee and numerous seminars and assistance for people based in Italy, primarily, of course, uh, for four years now. And uh, there, we've covered all different kinds of topics and, and we've done it from all different kinds of angles. And I think as you and Rico, we agree that it's, it's, a, it's a novel or a, or a movie that's about to finish. And I think we can't wait to get to the finish line. Um, in any case, before that finish line, for any of you that are interested, I will let you know that we have a final series of Brexit updates that we're holding between now and the end of the year for people to get ready for Brexit, okay? They're, they're going to be, we started with this series, uh, this new series only yesterday. The next installment is on the 29th of October and then on the 12th of November and the 26th of November uh, and then finally the 10th of December. And you can find more information if you're interested on the Britcham Italy website. That's britchamitaly.it where we'll be discussing the key um, uh, challenges primarily for businesses as they approach the end of the transition period. And finally, one word on property. Um, I think that property is such an important industry and potential driver of the economy, and hence it's, it's crucial for Italy. Um, and I think that uh, Italy has a lot to offer and, and it welcomes uh, investment, particularly uh, from, from the UK. There's lots of good infrastructure and enviable, enviable lifestyle here, and of course, plenty of talent, plenty, uh, a very talented workforce as well. So without any further ado, I'm looking forward to hearing from the speakers. I hope you enjoy the day. Please let us know any questions you have. And if we can help uh, based here in Milan with your property investment desires, then please get in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, and now I would give the word to uh, Geraldine Williams, uh, who is a policy advisor on citizen rights at the UK Embassy in Rome. And um, we know that there are about 1 million uh, UK citizens uh, spread out uh, in the 27 countries of the EU. I would start perhaps uh, to ask you how many there are in Italy, and then please go ahead with your presentation about citizen rights uh, in Italy. You. Thank you very much and thank you very much indeed on behalf of the British Embassy for having us, for asking us to contribute today. It's a great pleasure to be here and to speak to you all. Um, Asha, would you like to say a hello before we carry on? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much uh, for inviting us along to this presentation. Thank you to the organisers for um, including us both. Um, I think we're going to do a joint presentation, if that's okay. Um, and uh, I think the way we're going to divide it is I'm going to do a bit of an update on what's happening with the negotiations and then Joey will go into the detail of what that means for citizens. Um, so... Let me say Asha, Asha Brooks is a first secretary at the UK Embassy, I forgot to introduce you. I was going to do it later, I didn't know you. You want to do it together, which is great. Please, go ahead. Uh, no problem, thank you so much. Yes, I'm First Secretary EU Exit Negotiations in the Embassy. So uh, that means that I work on all things related to the future relationship negotiations. And I particularly um, focus on the Italian government side of things. So working with the Italian government to ensure that we are both doing um, everything we can to prepare for the end of the year, um, including protecting the rights of citizens, which is both countries' absolute top priority issue. Um, so yeah, so maybe I'll just start by saying something briefly about what's happened with the negotiations or what's happened this year. So as you are all well aware, the UK left the political institutions of the EU on the 31st of January. We left with a deal. That deal is the withdrawal agreement. That is an international treaty that has been ratified by both sides. 
and um, contains a number of important elements. The most important of which is the was the agreement of a transition period, which is what we are in right now and which will last until the end of the year, which meant that practically speaking, nothing changes because the UK, although it has left the political institutions of the EU, um, remains within the single market and the customs unions. So practically speaking, nothing has changed. But as um, a number of the speakers have correctly pointed out um, already, from the 31st of December, the UK, regardless of what happens with the um, negotiations that are happening right now, which are the negotiations to define the future relationship between the UK and the EU, the future trading arrangements, the future arrangements on um, issues think, like think on things like mobility, um, regardless of whether those negotiations are um, successful or not, um, things will change at the end of the year. And our top message to both businesses and to citizens is to um, to check, change, and go. That's the that's the uh, the three words the three word um, slogan. But that basically means start to think about what you need to do to prepare for um, things which are going to change regardless, because the UK will have a different relationship with um, the EU from the 1st of January next year. Um, so yes, that's our top priority is to continue engaging with the negotiations. We'll see what happens today. Um, it's a dramatic moment in the, in the course of the negotiations. Um, we'll see what comes out of the European, um, if anything further comes out of the European Council and we're expecting a statement from the Prime Minister um, today. Both sides have clearly signalled that they want to deal, um, but there are quite, you know, some differences in approach and we are continuing to see whether it will be possible to bridge those, um, bridge those, dif those differences. But regardless, um, both sides are also investing heavily, and this is a, a big chunk of my work at the moment in Italy, in preparing for the end of the year and all of the things that are going to change. I'll just say something um, very quickly about uh, UK citizens who are already resident in the UK or people who are living in, in Italy and, or people who are looking at buying property, for example, next year, um, because there is a difference in approach. So anybody who is, who is resident in Italy or moves to Italy before the end of this year will be protected by the withdrawal agreement, which has a very long chapter on all of the rights that they will be entitled to um, as, <clears throat> as UK nationals who are protected by the withdrawal agreement. So for that cohort of people, very little is going to change in practice. Um, and there'll be some things they need to do to prepare. And I'm sure Jerry will, um, will talk about what some of those things will involve. Um, but practically speaking, very little changes for anybody who uh, chooses to exercise their rights um, of free movement within the course of this year. Um, it will be different starting from the beginning of next year for anybody who chooses to um, move or invest in property um, from the 1st of January next year. And we're doing a lot of work to explain to people what those differences will be. Um, I might hand over to Jerry to say something, a, bit, a few more details about what that means in practical terms. Thank you. Thanks, Asha. Thank you very much. So just to introduce myself, my name is Jerry Williams. I'm the Regional Consular Policy Advisor on Citizens' Rights. And as Asha said, um, the embassy has been working very closely with the Italian government on the rights of UK nationals in Italy. I suppose I would underline the key point, which is um, that whatever happens with the negotiations, uh, we have the withdrawal agreement and the withdrawal agreement, as Asha says, protects the rights of UK nationals living in Italy. So those rights aren't dependent on the negotiations. They're protected by the withdrawal agreement, which we have in place. And to be protected by that withdrawal agreement, you need to be living in Italy by the end of the year. You should try to register as soon as you can. So that's register with your local town hall. Um, and currently, to, in answer to your question, which you started with, um, we have officially around 31,000 UK nationals registered with their town hall in Italy. That's a 6.9% increase year on year um, from 2018 to 2019, which, um, I'm hoping 6%, you said 6%, 6 increase. increase between 2018 and 2019. I'm hoping one of the reasons for that is because our message of get registered is being heard 
um, and people are taking the action they need to take, which is register with their town hall. So our, one of our key messages for UK nationals who want to have that full pack of rights under the withdrawal agreement and they want to settle in Italy is to register with your town hall by the end of the year. I know it isn't always a straightforward process, and we're working really closely with the Italian government in ensuring that town halls know how to handle UK nationals, how to recognise them, how to issue the documents correctly. Um, but it is absolutely what UK nationals should be doing if they can by the end of the year. Now, what happens to people who, let's say, arrive in Italy in December, middle of December, to settle? They may not have time to register with their town hall. Um, to be in scope, as we say, to be protected by the withdrawal agreement, you don't actually have to be officially registered. You need to be able to evidence that you're living in Italy. So you've got a work contract or you've got a property that you're living in and you've got financial resources, you've got some form of healthcare cover, all the things that show that you are lawfully settled in Italy and then you should try to register as soon as possible. So my message is, if, you, if you're in Italy now, get registered if you haven't already. And we know most, you know, most UK nationals who live here do get registered. You know, they know that's what they need to do. Um, and if you've only just arrived in Italy and you're here to stay, you're here to settle, you've moved to Italy, register as soon as you can. So those, that's the key message on residency. Um, now, just to complicate matters a little bit, if I may, the Italian government has also made available a new document for those who have registered with their town hall. So you've registered with your town hall, you've done what you should do, you also have the right now to get a new document and that document actually makes reference to the withdrawal agreement. So we call it the withdrawal agreement attestazione. So it's not your residency document, it's something you have a right to in addition. You don't have to get it, there's no deadline for getting it, but our advice to UK nationals and your family members is to go back to your town hall where you registered and say, I have a right to a new document. Um, please give it to me. You have to pay a small fee. You only have to show proof of ID. They find you on their system so they know that you're registered and you will get the withdrawal agreement at the station. Again, attestazione. It's actually the full name is Attestazione di Iscrizione Anagrafica. Now, try, 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 try to translate that in English. Ah, oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling it the Withdrawal Agreement Residency Document. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to wave a little red flag here. It's got the same name as your residency document. So it's a bit confusing, oh. I'm afraid. But it is the difference is that it refers to the Withdrawal Agreement. It's the only bit of paper you can get at the moment which makes reference to the Withdrawal Agreement. So although it isn't mandatory, it isn't mandatory to get it there's no deadline our advice is if you want to have all the evidence that you can possibly have that you are protected by the withdrawal agreement go along to your town hall and request this new attestazione now um if that is an awful lot to take in that's a lot of information the best thing you can do is look on our living in italy page on gov.uk you can find an example of the attestazione you can find information on how to get it you can find information how to register as a resident um, and you can find a whole lot more as well around healthcare, around driving licenses, around your passport. So Google living in Italy on gov.uk, sign up to that page and you can read all the information you need. So that's really my key messages for people already living in Italy or moving to Italy to settle. Um, from next year, people who come to Italy who haven't already settled before the end of the year, so let's say they're planning to come in 2021, it's likely they will be considered as third country nationals. So that means, uh, you know, we already know that should mean visa free visits for 90 days in 180 days. So no visa requirement for those short visits, you know, for holidays as a tourist, short visa free periods, as is um, usual for sh under the Schengen border code. Um, for any longer stays, it will require some form of visa, which you will need to apply from outside of the UK. So, for example, from the Italian consulate in the UK, before you get to Italy, once you get to Italy, using your visa to get into Italy, 
you'll then need to get your permit or your permit of stay within i think it's within eight days of arrival so you can see there's a big difference the people who are already in italy by the end of the year <coughs> protected by the withdrawal agreement register with your town hall get your attestazione and the people who are thinking of coming to italy in 2021 onwards who will be treated as third country nationals and will need to take specific actions as a third country national thank you geraldine very interesting and very interesting point about attestazione because as an italian living in the uk and who has received settled status the big issue here is for the european citizens that settled status is a digital status so some people say we'd like to have a piece of paper so in italy british um, citizens in Italy are able through this attestazione, not mandatory, but still something that you can exhibit and say, this is legal, I have the right to be here. So, uh, I don't know uh, if uh, you two have, uh, you Ash and Geraldine, you have something more to say or should we go to the next speaker? Okay, you'll, you'll be able to answer questions later. So the next speaker is, let's see if we have in time, yes, we, are, uh, we have in time for all our guests, is uh, an international uh, uh, lawyer, uh, a solicitor, as they say in the UK, avvocato in uh, Italy, Gian Domenico De Tullio, who will speak uh, specifically about legal assistance to um, British citizens at this time of Brexit who are in Italy and want to see their status uh, uh, preserved. John Domenico De Tullio. I am the managing partner at the Tullio Law Firm. For 55 years, the Tullio Law Firm has been providing international clients with independent legal advice. We offer services in all the major fields of Italian law, with particular expertise in real estate and inheritance matters. Property investments do not fall under EU legislation. Ownership and property laws have always been based on sovereign laws set by individual countries. When you buy a property in, for example, England, the applicable <coughs> law is that of England and Wales. When you buy property in Italy, your purchase is governed by Italian legislation. Cross-border property matters are regulated under Italian law according to the principle of reciprocity. The law establishes a quid pro quo principle. In simple terms, you can invest in the Italian real estate market, provided your own country allows Italian nationals to invest there. Reciprocity is considered to exist for EU member states without any need to verify it. This will continue for UK nationals until the Brexit transition period ends on December 31st, 2020. Now that the UK has left the EU, verifying reciprocity has again become an issue. According to the Italian Foreign Ministry, which is responsible for clarifying such matters, even if the UK and the EU do not reach an agreement, Reciprocity will continue after the Brexit transition period ends because the UK, as part of its commitment within the World Trade Organization, does not set any restrictions for foreign investors and therefore for EU and Italian nationals to invest in its internal real estate market. If you are thinking of relocating to Italy, there is no need to put your plans on hold. Property ownership in Italy does not give you automatic entitlement to residency. A UK national who registers as a resident in Italy by 31st December 2020, the end of the Brexit transition period, will retain rights to stay in Italy. From January 1st, 2021, unless otherwise agreed between the UK and the EU, standard immigration provisions applicable to citizens of non-EU and non-Schengen states will apply to UK nationals who are not registered as Italian residents. 
Relocating to Italy as a resident should remain relatively straightforward. Italy is not expected to make the residency process difficult for UK nationals. Unless otherwise agreed, UK nationals will be handled the same ways as other third country, non-EU nationals, such as Australians, New Zealanders, Americans and Asians, who have been successfully gaining residency in Italy for many years. This may involve obtaining an elective residence visa, which, amongst other things, involves being able to prove that you have sufficient funds to support yourself and dependents. A lawyer will be able to assist you with this process. If you are a resident in Italy, the same tax rates apply to all residents, regardless of nationality. If you receive income from the UK, tax treatment is determined by the UK-Italy Double Taxation Treaty. This is not governed by EU regulations. The same applies, by the way, if you are a UK resident and receive income from Italy. Such treaties are reciprocal agreements reached between two countries independently of the EU. So the UK's withdrawal from the EU should have no bearing on future tax treatment. If you are retiring to Italy and haven't been a tax resident here in the preceding five fiscal years, you may be able to take advantage of a recently introduced 7% flat tax rate. Individuals with an income from a foreign pension or other source abroad who transfer their tax residence to certain municipalities in some regions in southern Italy can benefit from this for 10 years. For second home owners, you will also enjoy the same treatment and rights as third country nationals. UK nationals will be allowed to stay in Italy for 90 days within any period of 180 days. If you are not resident in Italy, but derive an income in Italy for tax purposes, you must still make an annual tax declaration. The Italian tax authorities are only concerned with income you generate from activities in Italy, not your worldwide income. Typical example of this include any interest you earn on deposits with an Italian bank, or income you receive from letting your Italian property. If you do let your Italian property, you will be able to offset certain expenses against the income from rental, repairs, management expenses, local taxes, and so forth. Residual income is taxed at between 19 and 43%, depending on the income you receive. For most people, it will be about 30%. And this income is part of your worldwide income. It will have to be declared in the UK too. But again, double taxation rules apply. You do not need to file a tax declaration with the Italian tax authorities if you do not generate any income in Italy. The Italian property purchasing process is different to UK conveyancing. Money in the form of deposits is transferred much sooner than in the UK and you will be required to sign legally binding contracts written in Italian far earlier too. It is important to understand the process and the legal implications before you embark on making your property purchase in Italy. Briefly, Italian conveyancing proceeds through three key stages. The first one, proposti revocabile in acquisto, reservation offer. At this stage, the vendor agrees to remove the property from the market for a period of time, normally 15 days. A reservation offer is not always used. It depends on whether the sale is a private sale or through an estate agent. At this stage, the buyer conducts relevant searches and surveys and is required to pay a deposit. If the vendor does not formally accept the buyer's offer, the deposit will be returned to the buyer. 
if the offer is accepted, the deposit is treated as a purchase down payment. The second stage is uh, contratto preliminare di rendita, preliminary contract. This legal document sets out detailed terms and conditions of the sale. The buyer is required to pay the second deposit, caparra confirmatoria, normally equivalent to a minimum of 10% of the purchase price. This deposit will not be refunded if the buyer backs out without a valid legal reason. If the vendor pulls out of the sale, the deposit will be refunded in full. In the preliminary contract, the parties also set completion date with an official of the Italian state, a notary public, notario. The third and final stage of Italian conveyancing is the atto di vendita, deed of sale. Italian law requires that the deed of sale must be drafted in Italian and it must be translated if a party does not understand Italian. For legal purposes, the Italian version of the deed of sale will prevail. The notario reads and explains the Italian version of the deed of sale contract in the presence of the sellers and the buyers or their legal representatives, bar of attorney. If the parties to the sale are not fluent speakers of Italian, a translator would be required at the completion meeting. Once the deed of sale has been signed by all those present, the balance of the purchase price is paid to the seller and the keys are handed over to the buyer. It takes approximately one month following completion for the deeds of new ownership to be registered at the relevant land registry office. A few words about uh, a notary public, notario in Italian. A notario is legally required to manage completion. A notario is a public officer of the Italian states and acts on the state's behalf to certify that the transaction has been conducted in the correct manner and relevant taxes and fees are paid. The best way to protect your interests during the Italian conveyancing process is to engage your own solicitor. To avoid any conflict of interest, it is important to choose your own solicitor rather than a legal advisor recommended by someone involved in the transaction who may have a vested interest. Although it is not a legal requirement in Italy to engage a lawyer when purchasing a property, an experienced property lawyer can guide you through all the legal complexities of Italian conveyancing and related paperwork, as well as help resolve any legal issues that come up along the way. I know that in the UK, it is standard practice to engage a solicitor to handle your property conveyancing. Yet, we often meet UK nationals who didn't use a lawyer in Italy and have subsequently run into problems. Instructing a lawyer may seem like an additional cost, but it is actually only a small percentage of the overall cost of buying a property. In fact, a lawyer can negotiate purchase price, terms and conditions, so you may even save money. Having your own lawyer offers peace of mind and prevents frustrating and costly legal issues that may be very difficult to rectify once you own a property in Italy. There are things you may not know about the property just from viewing it with an estate agent or the vendor, structural and legal problems, which a lawyer can play a crucial role in identifying before you begin the purchasing process. In a worst case scenario, a failure to identify issues before you buy could generate consequences under criminal law. Illegal works, when discovered, can lead to seizure of the property and a criminal court case. In a worst case scenario, you may find some or all of your property becomes subject to a demolition order. Seeking compensation from the vendors 
generally implies a litigation in court, which might take years and sometimes could turn out to be pointless if the vendors are unable to pay a compensation. Your lawyer will do a set of legal searches for you. Searches should include title deeds, debts on the property, planning permission, and Italian zoning legislation. Environmental factors could be important too, depending on the location of the property. Some regions of Italy are prone to ground stability issues, such as landslides or earthquakes. Your lawyer can help you arrange geological and structural surveys. If anything out of the ordinary is found during searches, your lawyer will be able to advise you what action should be taken. As part of its COVID recovery plan, the Italian government has recently introduced the super bonus 110% scheme, which provides a wide range of incentives to make houses as earthquake proof and energy efficient as possible. The scheme offers real benefits for Italian property owners and buyers. A few words about power of attorney. This is a useful instrument. If, for whatever reason, you are unable to get to Italy in order to complete your property purchase, if you have given your lawyer a power of attorney, your lawyer can complete your property purchase on your behalf. With an ongoing health crisis, it is important to ensure that contractual terms and conditions, such as force majeure clauses, protect you against possible Buying a property can have long-term impacts. I'm often asked if Brexit affects estate planning and wills. It doesn't, but it does serve as a timely reminder to make or review your will if you purchase property in Italy. And you should certainly take inheritance into account when buying a property in Italy. Italian inheritance law is different to UK inheritance law. Italian inheritance law requires you to leave a share of your estate to your spouse or civil partner and certain blood relatives, such as your children. This is known as forced inheritance and means you're not free to leave your Italian property to whomever you wish in your will. There are no joint wills in Italy, by the way even if you're married or in a civil partnership. An EU regulation known as Brussels 4 was introduced in 2015. It allows you to elect either Italian law or the law of your nationality to govern your estate. The choice of law clause is available to foreign nationals who own property in Italy, including non-EU nationals. So, for example, UK national could nominate UK law to govern their Italian property. If you want your will to be governed by a law other than Italian law, you must take action. This means stating in a valid will which law you elect to apply to your property. Italian or your area of the UK, England and Wales, Scotland or Northern Ireland. I should point out that there may be inheritance tax implications to electing the choice of law. If you don't make a choice of law in your will, the Brussels 4 default position is that succession of your estate is governed by your country of habitual residence. The laws of England and Wales, however, state that property passes under the laws of the country in which it is situated. So unless you have a choice of law clause in your will, your Italian property even if you're habitually resident in England and Wales, will be governed by Italian inheritance law. Should your will be written in Italian or English or both? Legal documents can be tricky and a misconstruction of your wishes after your death can cause time-consuming, costly and heartbreaking problems. It is wise to have a legally valid translation. Italian inheritance tax law is complex. It applies to the entire net value of an estate, 
including movable and immovable assets. As each case is different, I recommend that you seek qualified legal and financial advice on estate planning matters. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If you need help, please get in touch. Thank you, uh, Gian Domenico. I forgot to say at the beginning that uh, the Tullio Law Firm has an office in Rome, but uh, can cover as offices and people all over the Italian territory to help you. And uh, uh, something very interesting that um, Mr. De Tullio said um, about uh, the tax rate for pensioners in Italy. At the beginning of our conversation, another lawyer, Mr. Belluzzo, said perhaps something good might even come out of this extremely complicated matter that is Brexit, where maybe some people will realize that if you move to certain places in southern Italy, you can have a 7% tax rate as a pensioner on your end, so it's a big advantage. Speaking of moving to the south, A Place in the Sun is the title of a famous movie from the 50s and also of an internet site that helps to locate real estate in Italy and other countries where there is a lot of sun. And we have here to talk about it, Liz Rowlinson, who is an international journalist writing for the FT and other publications based in Italy and editor of the site, A Place in the Sun. Please, please. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for that, Enrico. Um, I feel very privileged to be asked to be on this panel and I've actually learned a lot already. It's great that um, to hear from Geraldine the, the, the latest um, things that British people who are moving to Italy need to do and I'm going to help um, get that information out through my um, uh, journalism. Um, I've been covering overseas property for 20 years Uh, Italy has always been a massively popular place to go and buy property. Um, it's, it's generally been in the top five places that British people invest. Um, I mean, the lifestyle, it's never been a purely um, investment location. It's always been about the fabulous lifestyle, um, the, the food, the wine, the history, the culture. Um, I regularly travel to Italy um, until recently. Um, with massive amount of buyers being interested in the, the, the Italian lakes, the south, Tus Tuscany, um, Abruzzo, um, all, all different parts of Italy are very popular still. Um, we found that this year, despite Brexit, despite Covid, um, there's still a lot of interest to buy in Italy and we've been doing some webinars through A Place in the Sun and we've had two or three hundred people each time desperate for information to, to, to find out, you know, how this is going to impact their decision. Um, Gian Domenico has covered very well all the legal aspects of what British people can buy after this year. Um, and I, I, I would only add to that, that as well as the incentive that you've both mentioned about um, uh, pensioners moving to southern Italy, There's also the flat tax um, that for wealthy buyers going to Italy, and I've, I've interviewed quite a lot this year because I also work for the Times and the Financial Times, um, that flat tax of paying €100,000 if you move to Italy has been very popular. Um, I've seen quite a lot of take up in, in the Lake Como and in Tuscany. So um, that's another thing to, that Italy has really attract, is doing a lot to keep attracting interest. Um, we, you know, interest is ongoing. Um, the um, the things that have been holding people back are perhaps the the, the travel restrictions mainly this year. Um, the Brexit uncertainty. Of course, some people are hanging on, but again, as uh, Gian Domenico pointed out, we'll still be able to buy holiday homes in Italy, um, which many of us want to do. Um, we'll still be able to go and stay in them for up to 90 days at a time. So I think. The picture is not all negative. Um, um, Italy was very popular before we even were part of the EU and it will continue to be popular. So um, I, I think that getting the advice out, I'm sure, you know, going into the future, um, there'll be a lot of interest. And 
um, it, it's very useful for these sessions to provide people with, with some great advice. So thank you very much for, um, for um, your support. And um, we, have, we have some resources for buying in Italy from the lifestyle side on a place in the sun.com. But obviously your websites um, for, for Geraldine's, um, the, the Chamber of Common, Commerce as well, have some great information, which I will get out there. So thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you for to all the speakers of this uh, seminar. And now, uh, with the help uh, from Carolina, uh, if we have any questions from the people who have been following us, uh, the speakers will be here to answer. If that's okay, Enrico. Yes, of course. Uh, I might ask you, uh, Liz, when you're talking about that increased interest uh, or, or healthy interest, at least, in, in property in Italy and moving to Italy, is, is, have you been able to work out how much of that is from people that are perhaps disenchanted with Brexit or, you know, maybe Europeans that are now looking to come back? You know, is there a way that your data has been able to help you identify that there's a Brexit uh, factor? Well, um, anecdotally, um, the people that have been um, attending our webinars, they've been a mixture of people um, really keen to just make a complete reset after COVID, like we're doing the world over. There's been a lot of um, British people who want to live in the, Tus you know, the Tuscan countryside, get some fresh air, move to the, to the green heart of Italy. Um, there's also a lot of Americans, which is interesting, wanting to do the same. I into a lady um, from California. I mean, they've got their own issues with wild, wildfires there. She's bought a she bought a place in Sardinia on the back of listening to our webinars. So it's 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 people are very much there doing what they can to research. And um, and going back to your question, um, I mean, uh, some people are just sort of brought forward their plans to buy in five years to now, and are just trying to sort of get on with it. And um, um, generally, people have an Italian connection of some sort, um, I feel, or, 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 or if not, just a passion for Italy um, and what it offers. Right, I understand. It makes sense. I guess there may be similar increases around your, the other countries that you work with in, in, in Spain and France, where I suppose there's a lot more British people. I have to say that Spain and France are kind of way up there above Italy and Portugal, which are the next layer. Um, the, the, I think we all know that buying in Italy for the average British person is not the most straightforward um, pr process. It, most, it, most British people are not fluent in Italian and even I am not and I'm married into an Italian family so I've, I'm embarrassed about that. But um, I think that, you know, it, that part of the charm is that it's not an easy process and if, you, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it and you, you embrace the, the Italianness of the process. But um, um, I no, I mean, I'm afraid Italians, you know, Italy or Spain, they have both have their charms. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, from uh, Matt Johnson, please, can you explain the flat tax of uh, 100,000 euros? So whoever wants, maybe uh, our lawyer, uh, Gian Domenico De Tullio or someone... If John Domenico is willing to take the question, then I welcome him to address it. If not, I might be able to add a little bit of... Or you, uh, perhaps, Daniel? I am happy to say a few words. I'm not a tax lawyer, but, you know, it's... I, 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 if you prefer, I can do it. It's my, it's my field, so... I leave yeah, the so word to the president. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to advise. I'm here as, as a president and chamber, but, of course, it's my field, so... Um, I mean... There are plenty of information on, on the website and on the internet. We even done something as a chamber, uh, or, but in a nutshell, uh, it provides you the same uh, effect as the same as the UK one with the res no dom rules, where basically if you were to become resident in Italy after you spent more than nine years abroad or you've never been resident in Italy at all, regardless if you are a citizen of Italian origin or not, you can apply for the flat tax, which means that you can pay only uh, under 1,000 uh, euros per year for a maximum of 15 years on all your foreign income 
but the Italian income are going to be taxed as normal income, of, or as, as, as the, the avocado was saying before, on the normal rates. However, there's a very important attraction. There is no inheritance tax on your estates if you apply the under 1,000. So that's a very important attraction that we've seen and we follow many investors that they move to Italy. And, and to, to, to finish, I, I think that a seminar like this should uh, really help people to understand how much Italy is attractive now compared to three to five years ago. We have this under 1,000 flat tax, we have the re-entry Cervelli, the impact rate rules, we have the 7% for pensioners. So uh, I don't want to compare any country with, with Italy because it wouldn't be fair, but I would say that uh, mm, we have so many attractions that they put us right to the top of the league at the moment. Uh, uh, if I have to talk about the tax, of course, we are much more attractive than, than France uh, and, and even Spain and even Portugal at the moment. So I think it's something that probably we can uh, took uh, another chance and speak about uh, in another seminar. Certainly. Thank you, Alessandro. <clears throat> another question, I suppose, for Leeds. Can you give an idea of the reputation of Apulia in the British mines compared to Tuscany and other more famous locations for an holiday home? Yes, I think we've got someone on the panel who's in Puglia actually, but from a British yes. perspective, or, um, oh, I'm, I love Puglia and um, I think it's in the last few years it's become a lot um, more popular, it's become very fashionable because of various American celebrities getting married etc there. Um, of course, you have to be careful in southern Italy and use a lawyer, as Gian Domenico explained um, very well. Um, but I really think that Puglia has become um, um, there. You know, it's it's um, it's almost. I, I do I, I do a lot of work with Gateway. Dot com and it, the, 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 an Italian property portal and Puglia has actually begun to uh, rival Tuscany as the most popular location for British um, searches in, for Italian property. So it has really gone up there um, and I think that the, um, uh, I mean, uh, there aren't any, you, you just have to be a bit careful about um, what you buy where and get do your due diligence on, on the purchase and, and I think it's a, yeah, uh, it's a great place. I think we all agree about that as an Italian too. Uh, another question, what is deemed sufficient for proof of financial independence for retiring in Italy? Is there an amount that is considered necessary? I mean, perhaps our friends from the embassy or whoever wants to answer this. I, I can answer this question if needed. Yes. It's, uh, for a single individual person, the amount of money which is normally requested corresponds to Euro 8,000 per year. So it is uh, quite, uh, quite a reasonable uh, amount of money. So 8,000 is, is the figure which is normally requested for uh, a private individual applying for residence. Thank you, Gian Domenico. And the follow-up question to this you might want to answer also is, does proof of financial independence require an Italian bank account? This is uh, an interesting question and, uh, and, and maybe Jeremy can also express an opinion about it. I can tell you based on my personal experience that many municipalities request a bank statement from an Italian bank Although I do not personally believe that this is a, a strict legal requirement because you need to prove to be financially self-sufficient, but it's nowhere written that such evidence should be provided uh, from an Italian bank. But I can say that in my personal experience, many officers at, in, in various municipalities at the registry office request an Italian bank statement maybe the embassy you know, could uh, talk to Antri about this and because I believe uh, setting this requirement is, is unfair because nowadays opening a bank account in Italy for compliance reason is not uh, an obvious procedure, especially for non-resident. So sometimes we, we find a, a sort of catch-22 situation. So some, sometimes uh, it is set as a requirement, although in my personal opinion, it shouldn't be. 
Another uh, legal question is for someone who has an international career, how many days can I be out of the country, uh, out of Italy, I suppose, in a month or in a year? So I can take that on if you'd like. Um, so if yes. this is about maintaining your residency status in Italy, you need as a temporary resident, so before you've got the five years continuous residency to be a permanent resident, so as a temporary resident, you need to be able to evidence that you were spending at least six months in every 12 month period in Italy, if asked, you know, you need to be able to evidence that. And I think that works out at something like 183 days in the 365. They don't need to be continuous, so you don't need to sit there and be in Italy for six months all in one go, but you need to get to that total in every 365 day period to keep your temporary residency status. And then if you want permanent residency status, which gives you a couple of additional benefits, you need to have five continuous years of, of living in that way to then get your permanent residency status. So meaning five years in which you spent at least six months plus one day a year. Exactly. Absolutely right. Uh, another question, uh, I suppose, for Liz, perhaps, what are the particular type of properties that investors, British or not, are seeking in Italy? The, um, well, generally in Italy, the attraction is those beautiful, historic, typical properties. You, you don't tend to go to Italy to buy a new build property, although I believe the Italians quite like those for, for many reasons. Um, no, the, the, the dream property for many British people is a farmhouse in Tuscany or Abruzzo um, or Umbria or um, in Puglia, a lovely Masseria, um, a Trullo. Um, yes, I mean, it, we, we look, that's, that's the unique thing about Italy, the fabulous properties, or maybe even an apartment in a city uh, a, a townhouse but um, we, we don't the, 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 there's been a trend towards properties that don't need complete renovation and work we like the ones that have been renovated for us already uh, particularly but um, you know um, they're, 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 there's, a, there's also a, a demand for um, uh, old properties that have been con converted into nice apartments which we've seen in developments in Tuscany and, and Florence, but generally it's for traditional um, historic properties. Another question perhaps for lawyer Gian Domenico De Tullio. Uh, someone says, Matt says, uh, ah, what a pity, I have already been resident in Italy twice. So this means uh, the 7% uh, tax for pensioners would not apply to me? It depends when. I, I guess you know, Mr. Belluzzo can I can possibly clarify this issue further because you know he's is uh, probably more competent in the area. But to my knowledge, it's uh, the essential requirement is not having been a resident in the country the five years before you apply for this uh, tax benefit. Yes, indeed. Yes, doesn't matter if you have been resident before. So into a, a period of at least five years. Thank you, Alessandro. <laughs> Now I'm sorry to, to interrupt. I have to, to leave the seminar and uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Enrico and all the other panelists and of course uh, uh, all the other uh, people that are participating so actively. Thank you very much for your time and I hope we can organize something else very soon. Thank you Alessandro, thanks a lot uh, for your thoughts and uh, for organizing this. And uh, now a question for Geraldine from the Embassy. Um, uh, Nick says, uh, I have an ID card, I suppose an Italian ID card, una carta d'identità, as we say. Does that mean I am a resident? The Gov UK site says I need an attestazione, descrizione, and so forth. But honestly, I can't remember if I have either. On another subject, purpose of the discussion, <laughs> this is a question for everybody. What is the South? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one. I'm going to answer the first one. <laughs> it's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> I shall leave that to people far more competent to answer that. Um, yes, if you've got an identity card, an Italian identity card, you must be a resident. You can't get an Italian identity card unless you're registered as a resident. However, our advice is if you can't remember what bit of paper you've got, now is the time to go along to your town hall 
and you can ask for a copy of your residency document. You know, you must be registered as a resident if you've got an Italian ID card, but I would say it's definitely worth having all the paper you can. So I would go along to your comune and say, can I have a copy of my uh, attestazione? And while you're at the town hall, you could ask for the additional one, this new one, under the, issued under the withdrawal agreement. So while you're there, you could also say, can I have pick up my new withdrawal agreement attestazione as well? I don't think that would do any harm. Thank you, Geraldine. And for the other question, as an Italian, I can say from what I remember from the school, we have Italy divided in north and central and south. And I, I think the south started with Campania on one side and Apulia on the other side. But I might be wrong. I don't know. It has been a long time since I was in school. Anyway, a question from... I could, I could uh, jump in there. Yes, Daniel. Um, <laughs> I thought that you might be the best person to answer that, but... Um, I might just add, there's actually in the tax attractive schemes that Alessandro and John Domenico have talked about, um, the government actually does outline a number of regions where if you move there, yes. that you'll get the benefit. Okay, so they, they are southern regions and I've got um, a list of them actually. There's just five or six. So I think the ones that apply for the 7% pension rate, for example, are uh, Puglia, Abruzzo, Molise, Basilicata, Campania, Sardinia, Calabria, and Sicilia. Yeah. That's right. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> and, and, and also, I believe, uh, I remember that this applies only on, on, for, for cities of less than 5,000 people. Is that right? Or I think it's 20,000. 20, 20,000 people. 20,000 people. Yeah. 20, people. 20, people. So. Actually, I'll just copy those uh, regions into the chat as well, because it's probably not so easy to remember if people are looking uh, yes. right now. Thank That's you. Interesting. All beautiful regions of Italy. Yeah. Uh, a question from... Rosemary, what are the additional costs to take into account when purchasing a property in Italy? So you cut out, what are these, the, the, the additional costs? Oh, additional costs, right. I guess Guad Domenico is, well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy to take this question if you want. You know, typically, I mean, and, and I, I guess it shouldn't be myself suggesting it, you know, uh, instructing a solicitor, which is my advice, then uh, most investors, they purchase uh, using the services of uh, a real estate agent. And uh, typically a real estate agent will charge 3% of the purchasing price plus VAT as brokerage fees. And that is paid on both sides. Although you know, uh, direct sales are possible, then uh, an investor should take in consideration the conveyancing tax in posta di registro, which changes whether you decide to purchase the property as your main residence under the commitment to move your residency to Italy within 18 months since the purchase, or 9% if you instead prefer purchasing a holiday home without any obligation in terms of residence, and uh, finally notarial fees. So this is typically the cost that somebody should take in consideration. Sometimes it is also recommended to instruct uh, a surveyor or an architect in order to have a technical report concerning the property. Once again, is something we, we normally recommend. Now we have a very uh, interesting question that can be addressed both to our friends from the embassy or from lawyer Gian Domenico De Tullio. Uh, a catch-22. Uh, someone says, uh, I, I have found out that I need an Italian address in order to open it, an Italian bank account, even an estero account. Can I use a temporary Italian address, like an Airbnb address? If not, it seems a catch-22 because I need an Italian bank account to buy a property. So. Uh, how to resolve this issue? I'm happy to take this question if, uh, if Geraldine is happy with that. In reality, there is a possibility to open uh, an account as non-resident. And by definition, if you're non-resident in Italy, you shouldn't provide any resident address in, uh, in the country. But where maybe the misunderstanding appears is connected with uh, 
Italian fiscal identity, Italian tax code, codice fiscale. What probably the guest is trying to say is any Italian bank, even if you want to open a bank account as non-resident, will request that you have uh, an Italian fiscal identity, therefore a codice fiscale. When applying for a codice fiscale, you must provide some kind of domicile. For example, you know, myself as a solicitor, I can do this job, I provide this service to many clients. Therefore, for purposes of a tax code application, they will have you know, fiscal residence in my office. Therefore, I invite you know, uh, whomever is willing to deal with this issue, whomever needs an Italian tax code, because that will be needed for any transaction having fiscal residence, in, having fiscal relevance in the country, not only for opening a bank account. You know, that, of course, would be necessary also if you're purchasing a property. We are in the position to help any, any guest who has uh, similar needs, so I invite them to contact uh, the Tulio Law Firm for such purposes. Thank you. Uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, how we, another question. How easy is to buy land, then build your own house? Roughly the same, harder or easier than in the UK? This is a very sensitive topic and I would like to take this question if possible, because I have many clients who are interested in, uh, in purchasing land and um, with the intention to, to build their own property therein. They should be aware that the Italian zoning legislation is opposite to what many could believe, is extremely strict. Therefore, building on land without having all relevant authorization, planning permission, landscape authorization, can generate very serious consequences, even in terms of criminal law. Therefore, you know, before making such type of investment, you want to make sure uh, a legal due diligence and technical due diligence also is completed concerning the land in order to understand what is the economic usability of this land and in order to understand whether it is possible to build and what is possible to build. Because, of course, you know, there is a number of uh, landscape restrictions, zoning regulations, and respecting them and uh, being extremely attentive to these kind of aspects is something I would recommend. We regularly write articles and guides concerning this topic, which we consider as extremely sensitive. They can be found on our website, www.thetulio.lawfirm.com. Um, a question from Patrick. Can I use a temporary address like an Airbnb in order to secure a permesso di soggiorno? I Is mean, I, can, uh, I just say a few words. I mean, during the transition period, EU law continues to apply to UK nationals coming to Italy. So I should have said that, made that clear right at the beginning. This year, nothing changes. So moving to Italy to settle, you do as you would have done three years ago. So you come and so you wouldn't have a permesso di soggiorno, which is for third country nationals. You would go to your town hall and get your residency permit, your residency document, which would be for UK nationals coming to Italy this year um, and if you want to register with the town hall to get your residency document the famous attestazione um, you will need proof of some form of residency um, and you know they have a right to check that you're where you say you are um, the police will come around and check that that's where you are so you need to be there to get uh, to be able to register as a resident but as I say if you're if I really want to emphasize if you're a UK national either currently living in Italy or thinking of moving to Italy this year there should be no talk of a permesso di soggiorno you know issued by the questora or the immigration office you need to interface with your town hall and your comune because you're still settling in Italy under freedom of movement rules 
And I would just, um, I would just flag something, if I may, is that anyone who's having a problem in getting registered in Italy, so regulating their status here, they want to settle in Italy, but they're struggling to regulate their set, uh, their status with the town hall. Um, we do have the International Organisation for Migration, IOM, who are currently supporting UK nationals in helping them to regulate their status. And you can find their details on our Living in Italy guide. So if you are having problems, do also tell your friends and family, you can get in touch with them. They can speak to your town hall on your behalf, for example, they can check your paperwork and they can talk you through the process. Thank you, Geraldine. And now there is a follow up question. For Jean uh, yes, May sorry. I just add uh, a few little comments concerning uh, this, uh, this issue because you know, they are based on my personal professional experience. When applying for residence, obviously one of the essential requirements, also of course you know, uh, until the deadline set by the withdrawal agreement, one of the essential requirements is obviously proving you have a dwelling. You, know, you have a place to stay, which implies for the applicant proving that they either rent a property or they own the property. I would like to highlight that the municipalities, they check such contracts and typically they request residential contracts. So I understand, you know, if I understood correctly, the question is whether can I apply for residence with a short-term Airbnb contract in my personal view, this is not possible because typically the registry office will request a residential, a residential contract, which is a long-term contract because by definition, if you're committing yourself to reside in the country, which means spending in the country at least six months, you cannot really produce or lodge together with, application, with your application a short-term rental agreement this is my experience concerning this issue yeah and just to add to that i absolutely agree and um it has to be as you say uh that your rental contract has to be have been registered you know it's got to be a, a legal registered With the inland revenue. absolutely right John Dominica. and the other thing i would say and this would be a good time to mention that bank account issue under the freedom of movement directive you don't need to have your financial resources if you're applying because you're financially depend, uh, independent as it were they don't have to sit in an Italian bank account that is absolutely clear under the freedom of movement directive so as you say we are engaging with town halls to make sure that that is well understood and we're working really closely with Anchi um, as well to get uh, make sure that town halls are fully aware of that. Geraldine this directive I believe it would be very useful if you if you publish it on your website I would be very happy you know, to give visibility to it because it's a, it's a recurrent topic and this generates a lot of issues because I can say I can notice there is a lot of reluctance from Italian banks in opening bank accounts not only for British citizens for non-Italian residents in general but this is mainly connected with some concerns which are, in my view, very often totally ungrounded, uh, connected with compliance and anti-money laundering checks, okay? But, you know, uh, we work very hard, you know, in, in this direction, helping our clients. Also, I would like to highlight, because I read, you know, this issue is also appearing in another question, uh, that in order to invest in the Italian real estate market, an investor does not necessarily need an Italian bank account. You know, the deposits can be paid on the notary's escrow account, or it can be paid in uh, alternative ways. Therefore, assuming and believing that you need an Italian bank account in order to invest in the Italian real estate uh, in the Italian real estate market. You know, it's a, it's a false understanding. This is not an essential requirement. Thank you, uh, Gian Domenico. And there is also a follow-up question for Gian Domenico from the previous uh, participants. Someone who says, I have a codice fiscale. I contacted the major Italian banks with London offices and they won't let me open an account from the UK. As I said, I mean, we go back to what I have just uh, mentioned a few seconds ago. 
first of all, you know, the main large majority of uh, represent re banks present in London, they do not really work uh, in the form of retail branches. So in order to open a bank account, any investor needs to appear in person before the branch in Italy, okay? Because you know, they are the ones who are working with the retail client base. So I personally do not believe it is technically possible opening an Italian bank account from London. And uh, therefore it is essential appearing in Italy before the branch manager and uh, obviously meet all the compliance requirements, which is very complicated. I mean, we, have, uh, uh, we are experiencing a lot of problems. We are succeeding with some clients in opening bank accounts, but checks can be very strict. And there is certainly some kind of reluctance, even more now that you know, the UK is leaving the EU. So whether this, you know, uh, this is a commercial decision coming from the top management of the banks. I cannot say, but it is a real problem. And uh, I believe it's important for the embassy to be aware of this. And now we have the last question, which is a, 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 more than a question. It's a story uh, from Elaine. Who tell us, she signed the proposal of Acquisto yesterday for a 1970s apartment in Canzo near Com. It cost 83,000 euros. The extra costs are about 10% of the purchase price. She says, I suspect that they would change very little if the price went down, went up considerably. But here is the question. I doubt I will be able to move in before 31st December. So she, she made the proposal, but she cannot move in. Is this proof of full-time residence? Uh, uh, would I still be able to retain my full EU rights? Geraldine, perhaps? It could be in scope. I mean, with people who've got property in Italy and want to be in scope of the withdrawal agreement, they've really got to make a decision about where they want their primary residency to be. You Obviously, you can live in two different countries and hopping between the two. But in terms of all the benefits that are linked to your residency, you've got to have one. You can't have your formal residency in two countries at the same time. So this person will need to decide that they, if they want Italy to be their full place of residency and therefore to be in scope of the withdrawal agreement and be protected by the withdrawal agreement, which are, give you lifelong rights. This isn't rights just up to the end of the year. This is lifelong rights for as long as you live and have your residency in Italy, then they need to be able to evidence that they were lawfully living in Italy by the end of the year. Now that doesn't just mean having property, it means other criteria as well. So it, um, you really need to check what, what you need to meet in terms of being able to evidence lawfully living. So it is about having property, but it's also being able to evidence that you, are, you have financial resources, that you had some form of healthcare cover and so on. So um, you may not need to physically be in Italy, but you need to be able to evidence that you are meeting those criteria. And then you really need to register your residency as soon as possible after the end of this year. I mean, our advice remains to UK nationals. If you want to be protected by the withdrawal agreement, try to register your residency with the town hall by the end of the year, if you can. Thank you, Geraldine. We have more questions, but no more time. If you want, you can uh, check the internet site of the embassy of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the British Chamber of Commerce in Italy, uh, of uh, the Tullio Law Firm in Rome. And uh, thank you for all the speakers. It was very interesting, very uh, lively conversation. And we don't know what will happen, but uh, in the next few hours or in the next few weeks, but let's just remain friends. <laughs>